Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inconvenient Truths. I'm your host, Jennifer Zheng. Today, I will talk about two extremely different, actually completely opposite, but both very sensational events in the entertainment or art community, as well as what we can learn from these two events. Before we move on to our topic, please let me introduce one more time the membership area of my, on my website. If you haven't, please do go to my website at jenniferzengblog.com, sign up to become a member of Inconvenient Truths, or make a donation. So this is the donation page. After you sign up, you can go to the member area, submit your questions or topic suggestions with this form. You can also claim your free gift, a signed magazine from me by filling your address in this form so that I can mail a copy to you. You can also check out members only content, the audio file for each show is for members only so that you can use your spare time to listen to the show if you don't have time to watch it. Anyway, I do hope this member, this member area can become a better channel for us to communicate without fearing the big tech suppression. Sometimes I feel very sad that America and maybe other countries too have become like this when we don't have free speech anymore. But I always remember a saying in Chinese, it is not because there is hope that we fight, but because we fight, there is hope. So let's continue to fight together. Now, let's move to our topic today. Let's begin from a good and a positive one. Recently, a Chinese language song called It Might Break Your Pinky Heart has become a YouTube sensation. It has so far got over 19 million views since its release on October 15. It has become the only, only Chinese language song among the most popular songs on YouTube. It is trending in nine countries and the most popular song on the Apple Music Store in Hong Kong. So what kind of a song is it and why is it so popular? On the surface, it looks like a love song between two lovers quarreling with each other, but every lyric in the song is actually mocking the CCP. 说的话，你从来都不想听，却又滔滔不绝，触整凡迹。不明白到底入了你哪里，总觉得世界与你为敌。Did you hear that? The several lines are actually mocking the CCP's. Wolf royal diplomacy, the CCP is so easily offended. And whenever it feels offended, it sends out a plethora of 50 cents army or Wu Mao on the internet to intimidate others. When it goes on, then the song goes on to mock the CCP's claim that Taiwan is an inseparable part of China. What I find amazing about this song is that every detail and every lyric have some very cleverly hidden messages in them that mock the behaviors of the CCP and its little, little pinks. For example, 
And the short video we just saw, the pink panda, of course, represents the CCP's China. Did you see the four characters, letters on the two flags in the pink panda's hands? They are NMSL. What do these four letters mean? They are actually the first letters of the pinyin pronunciation of four Chinese words, 你妈死了, which means your mother has died. This has actually this was actually what some overseas Chinese students shouted when they attacked Hong Kong students or other people they don't like. Let's watch a short video taken in Australia in 2019 during the Hong Kong people's protest against the CCP's anti-extradition bill. <laughs> Well, in this video, you can hear one female voice shouting Hong Kong stay strong in English, while hundreds of Chinese students are shouting four Chinese words together. These four Chinese words are worse than your mother has died. It starts with the F word that I don't want to repeat here, too dirty. There are many similar videos showing those brainwashed Chinese students confronting Hong Kong students or other minority groups all over the world. The world. I still remember when I first watched these kinds of videos, my heart pained me so much to see those young people being turned into cursing methods machines. The Chinese language is such a rich and beautiful language, yet these people didn't know how to use it properly and, and had turned it into such an ugly tool to attack others. So Nam Wei, the lyric writer and producer of this song, must feel the same. So he puts those four seemingly meaningless characters on the flags in the pink panda's hands. So from the beginning to the end, every lyrics, every detail is so cleverly written and designed. So people all over the world who are tired of the CCP's rockish bullying really feel that this song sings to their hearts. Let's see this shot. While the lyric says the truth does always hurt you badly, the visual shows the panda cutting some Chinese chives. In China, there is a very popular term, ge jiu cai, which means the CCP treats ordinary Chinese people like chives, which can be repeatedly, repeatedly harvested. Actually, I did a program in February this year to talk about the meaning of this term. So if you listen to or read carefully, you can find so many interesting allusions, including the origin of the CCP virus or COVID-19. And the CCP's great firewall on internet, the CCP's human rights abuses in Xinjiang, its so-called common prosperity goal. The CCP's crackdown on Hong Kong's Apple Daily newspaper, its boycott of Taiwan's pineapple, and the CCP's stealing from the world, etc. But the most important message is, you want me to bow, I can't do that. Then, at the end of the video, after saying, sorry, I hurt you, the singer actually pushes the panda to the ground and bashes it badly. Let's watch. <laughs> Okay. Immediately after the release of this song, the CCP blocked the two singers' social media accounts in China. The female singer. Cambridge Ten did a short video and saying that she doesn't care that her Weibo account was deleted, as she still has her other overseas accounts such as Instagram and Facebook. 
YouTube trending the gaming. So, you know, both the two singers are ethnic Chinese, although Nam, Nam Wei is a Malaysia Chinese and uh, Kimberly Chen is an Australian Chinese. They do have a lot of fans in China and the Chinese market is a very important one for them. However, they decided not to bow anymore and created such a song to express the same feeling of so many people. Enough is enough. After the huge success of this song, some people started to joke, wow, it turns out you can also earn huge money without kowtowing to the CCP, unlike many other big movie stars or business and political ed elites who kowtow to the CCP all the time. Some say, wow, there is a huge business opportunity to fight back against the CCP and everyone should hurry up and grasp this opportunity. Now let's watch another piece of performance. How do you like it? Well, the young pianist is Li Yundi, who, was a, who has a marvelous career as an artist and has a nickname Prince of Piano. But several days ago, on October 21st, he was suddenly arrested over prostitution allegations and the people all over China were so shocked. So what happened and why would people feel so shocked? Well, because Li Yundi is a very, very famous celebrity in China. And this is his story. He was born in Chongqing city in China in, in 1982 and is only 19, 39 years old now. He has won numerous competitions both in China and internationally. And uh, the most important one was the 14th International Chopping Piano Competition in 2000 in Warsaw. He won first prize at only the age of 18, and it had been 15 years since anyone had won first prize at this competition. He also became the youngest and the first Chinese winner in the competition's history. Imagine what a big deal that was for China. So when he returned to China from the competition, the CCP's leaders from Shenzhen city where Li Yundi and his mother lived then, especially went all the way from Shenzhen to Beijing to welcome him. This report you are seeing now is from the Shenzhen government website. You can see its website address has .gov, .gov .cn in it. In the same afternoon, the CCP's Minister of Culture received him in Beijing. One month later, he was given a special reception by the CCP's Vice Premier Li Lanqing. Later, he was interviewed by China Central TV, CCTV. He was invited to China's most important annual cultural event, the Chinese New Year's Gala, to perform five times. He was named one of the top 10 youth leaders in China, National Youth Ambassador, Ambassador of Shenzhen Volunteers, etc. He even became a standing member of Chongqing Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference and the then CCP Secretary Bo Xilai in Chongqing City personally gave him the certificate when he was named as the environmental ambassador for Chongqing city. 
So you can see he was an extremely successful artist who also had international renown. Not only that, he was also very much pro-CCP. The performance of him we just watched was a propaganda video to celebrate the CCP's 19th birthday on July 1st this year. And the song he performed was called Sing a folk song to the CCP, and the lyrics go like this. To our party, I dance and sing. Sing of her mom like care and concern, because of mom, my life beca begins. To the party, my heart links. But I would say this is a very timid or polished translation by I don't know who. It is tuned down to cater to English viewers. A more direct translation from the Chinese would be something like this. Sing a folk song to my dear party. The party is like my mother. When my mother only gave birth to my body, the light of the party shines on my heart. Well, this is my version of translation and much closer to the original Chinese version. Anyway, this is a very famous brainwashing song in China, which means while your mother only gave you your physical body, the party's light is what lights up your heart, your soul, etc. So the party is more important and dear than your own mother. So Li Yundi performed such a song as a birthday gave, gift to his dear party. So one would assume that because he's so talented, so good looking, so popular with both the public and the CCP, he must have tons of admirers, fans and followers. Why would he have sex with a prostitute being such a renowned prince of piano? That was why people were so shocked when the news came out. The police said the public reported him for prostitution and that, and that was why he was arrested. It was also reported that his WeChat pay record shows that he had used his real name to pay the pros prostitute and the price was 10,000 yuan for each time, etc. Very quickly, Li Yundi's arrest was trending on Chinese social media platforms. The CCP's mouthpieces all came out to condemn him, and the Chinese Musicians Association immediately announced that his membership was cancelled. The shows he participated in were all taken down. Even his photos were taken down by businesses, which once hired him as an ambassador etc. So overnight, he was completely ruined. So let's go on to talk about why this happened to him. However, there are many people who are not very convinced by what the CCP says about Li Yundi. They argue, why would Li Yundi need to hire a prost prostitute if he paid with his WeChat pay, how could the general public have the record of his payment history? Some also argue even if he did hire a prostitute, so what? He's still an outstanding pianist. Why should he be cancelled completely as an artist? Some people say he's a victim of the CCP's power struggle as as he might have connection with the ousted Bo Xilai, who once wanted to replace Xi Jinping and was sentenced to life in prison and who is now behind bars. Some say it was because there was a massive explosion in Shenyang city that day. So the CCP needed another piece of hot news to divert the public's attention. The same kind of thing happened many times ago in the past. Whenever there was a massive disaster, there would be immediately some very shocking news of 
a certain big star or celebrity having some sort of sex scandal so that everyone started talking about this scandal and would forget about the disaster. Sometimes there were even shocking photos and videos to go with the sex scandals so that people were kept very busy spreading and checking out those photos and videos. I have no way to know whether Li Yunding had indeed done what the CCP said he had done. But what I can say is ever since 1942, that was before the CCP took power in China, when the CCP head Mao Zedong said that literary and artistic workers should serve the party, artists have always been slaves in the CCP's eyes. Even if you become an internationally renowned artist, you are still a slave or chives that can be ripped by the CCP. Only you are a better quality one that can offer better service. The only freedom you have is to become a nicer, better slave. The CCP never has any respect for its slaves or chives. It can decide how and when to rip you according to its needs. So by comparing these two extremely these two extreme stories of Nam Wei and Li Yundi, I think we can see through some very important fact that is you don't have to sell your soul to the CCP to make money or to be successful even if you speak and sing in the Chinese language. And when you do sell your soul to the CCP, your story won't end well. People who feel very sorry for Li Yunding are saying, why didn't he try to migrate to other countries earlier? With his talent, he would have easily gained residency. Well, that's all for today. Please don't forget to check out my website at jenniferzengblog.com and sign up for membership or make a donation. Please also like and share my videos so that more people get to know the inconvenient truths. Thank you. See you soon.